Well, good morning. I hope you guys are well. Um, welcome to uh, a very early morning. Actually, it's about half past six and a very quiet field, which is nice because, you know, who wants to be around talking when there's people wandering around going, what's that prat doing talking into a, a small machine? So, good morning. <laughs> welcome to this week's uh, Norman's Wisdom. Did you like what I did there, by the way, with Norman's Wisdom? I was quite impressed with that. I was uh, actually quite surprised as well that um, I managed to come up with something like that so thank you um, for watching and thank you so much for watching last week's episode and I was a bit worried about putting it out because you know you do feel a bit um, self self um, what's the word uh, insecure perhaps a little bit about putting stuff out like that when you know you, it, it's not really usual subject content and uh, it's nothing to do with photography as such and so you know, thank you, thank you for everyone who watched it and thank you for everyone who commented on it. I really, I genuinely appreciate it and I'm making my way through the comments and I know I haven't replied to everyone, but I want to give the comments, you know, the respect that they deserve because you guys have taken a lot of time to write them and, you know, you've put very good points across and I want to take the time to actually reply to those points rather than just putting thank you very much, you know, which I could just do. I could just reply to all of them generically, but I really don't want to do that. So, so... I am working my way through those comments. And talking about the comments, <laughs> I wanted to say, I mention a couple. So Mark Deeth, Mark Deeth commented, and he said that as he was watching me uh, last week, his wife came in and she said, what's he moaning about now? <laughs> which uh, which you know, probably says a lot about me, um, really. Um, probably I'm a bit of a moaner. So it, Mark, if you want to you know, ask Mrs Deeth to come in at the moment and, and just um, enjoy you know, maybe two minutes of me not moaning, just being normal and, and actually being sort of thankful and, and, and happy. So yes, invite her in, sit her down. You know, she may need to sit down for this because it doesn't happen very often. Maybe get a drink or something. Anyway, um, <laughs> that, I thought that was interesting. And also, um, Barry Partington commented and said that I'm like a working man, Sean Tucker, which I think is a compliment. Um, <laughs> in fact, I know it's a compliment. But um, I think what he's trying to say is that, you know, I'm a... I like to talk about subjects, but I'm perhaps not as eloquent or intelligent, you know, or, or persuasive as Sean. So, and that's fair enough, because uh, all those are true. So, <laughs> um, talking to Sean Tucker, he put out a video last week. See what I did there, a little segue. Talking to Sean Tucker, he put out a video last week, uh, or a couple of weeks ago, about YouTube. You know, should you start YouTube in 2020 from his perspective? And a very good video it was, and on all of his videos, actually, I really enjoy Sean Tucker. I think he's a very, very good, very persuasive, very, very eloquent orator. So he put out a video saying, you know, essentially talking about YouTube in 2020, should you start a channel? And I thought, you know what, I've been thinking about doing this for a while, but generally <clears throat> when I'm in a particularly bad mood and it turns into a bit of a moan fest, surprise, surprise, Mr. Deeth. Um, but today... I wanted to put across my viewpoint as someone who isn't as, you know, it's probably more um, common and more uh, realistic of a vlogger or of a vlogger's experience than Sean Tucker's is. Because Sean's, you know, he's on you know, nearly 400,000 subscribers. And I would say that for every Sean Tucker, there's probably 100 in their niche, shall we say, there's probably 100 Gary Normans, right? So for everyone who's on sort of multiple hundreds of thousands of subscribers, there's a hundred people who are in those low thousands. And for every, you know, Gary Norman, re-photography, there's probably a hundred people underneath that in the, in the multiple hundreds of subscribers or who started and just given up because they just, you know, it hasn't been as successful as they've hoped it would be. So I thought, you know, I'm in quite a good position being probably your middle of the road, average sub, sub count, average success, successful YouTuber that I could maybe talk about my experiences. So that's what I'm going to do today. So for me, I just wanted to put a real couple of points across from my point of view and from my experience base. So should you start a YouTube channel in 2020 on whatever it is that you, you, know, you want to do? And I would say the short answer is yes, absolutely. There are so many benefits to starting a YouTube channel. Uh, just you know, a way to ex express your creativity and 
you know it's really beneficial for you and it gets you doing things that you you certainly wouldn't do if you didn't have a youtube channel but there are some caveats on that so the longer answer is yes you should but and i think the important thing the most important thing for me definitely is you've got to or you really should and you don't have to you know you do what you want really but if you want to have longevity i think you need to be passionate about the subject that you are putting out there on your channel and i'm not saying that from a viewpoint like oh you know you've got to maintain the integrity of, of the community and you must be passionate and you know you can't have these charlatans coming in who pretend they like photography for instance and and pretend they like it when actually they don't and they're just you know diminishing the integrity of the channel no no i'm not talking about that right what i'm saying is is that you could go out there and you could say right i can see i could see a, you know a bit of a gap in the market here you know and i really want to you know go out on youtube and no one's doing this at the moment and i don't really care about it but think about the subs i could get if i did i don't know extreme sewing or i don't know pig herding with cats or snail racing right let's say yeah i could i could i could, I could call in the market here i could be the first person you know who's got a channel on snail racing I haven't researched this there may be channels on snail racing but i don't know but anyway and that's great you know i don't really care about snail racing but you know once i get all these views and you know subscribers and and the money's coming in and, and people know me as a snail man i'm gonna be that's gonna be great and that's fine and week one you know right week one welcome to the snail racing vlog and i'm gonna go out into the garden <coughs> lose my voice I'm going to find some snails and then I'm going to put them in this circle which is their racing arena because we all have to go out to the edges. I know too much about snail racing really. Although you couldn't really have them going in parallel lines because they'd go off in different directions wouldn't they? Unless you put a very thin line for each one with a high wall. Anyway, no that wouldn't work but yeah so week one I've done this it's great and oh yeah brilliant. But the thing is, if you're not passionate about it, you've got to do that every week. If you say you want to do weekly vlogs, vlogs, you've got to do it every week, you know, for, I don't know, however long. So six months in, you know, week one, oh, it's brilliant. Six months in, you're like, oh, Jesus, I've got to do another vlog this week about those snails, you know. I've lost Malcolm to a crow. You know, I stood on three in the paddock yesterday. I'm back out to the bloody garden they're going through all my lettuces and right find these snails and then when i do find them you know it's, you know i have to you know do a time lapse of like 15 hours because that's how long the race takes and often my batteries run out and blah 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 blah. and i don't really care about this anyway and you can see my point you start to get where you're like oh really do i have to do this and that's where your passion for the subject matter comes in so Vlogging isn't easy. Some, sometimes it is, I guess. I guess if you sit down and you know you just walk around a field, perhaps, and spout crap for 15 minutes a pop every week, that's not too hard. But then what if it's raining? Anyway, vlogging isn't that easy. So if you've got a passion about the subject, you're more likely to stick at it, and you're more likely to continue doing it than you are, which is the same thing, than you are if you don't really care about it. And you're only doing it because you thought, oh, this could be a bit of a winner here. You know, I could make a bit of a bit of money out of this. And the reality of that is as well that you're unlikely to, even if you do have a huge passion for what you're doing and you do stick at it and you have found something new. There's still a number of factors that mean that you're unlikely to get to the Sean Tucker level, you know. Uh, so you've got to care about it. And... Like I said, YouTube's hard, and there's a number of times where I've wanted to stop doing the hobby that I love, and in fact I have stopped for a while, not because of that hobby or my waning interest in that, but because I felt the pressure of having to put out a video every week on YouTube, and that makes that that then makes your hobby a job, a chore, a task, a duty, and you start to think, oh, sure. 
not sure I really, you know, especially me, I'm the type of person who I love doing stuff, but someone tells me I've got to do stuff, then I stop loving it so much. Anyway, so it's really important for me, Whew, worn out, that you love what you do, right? That, that's a given, that's the first thing. Okay, secondly, you have to accept the fact that, and this is important as well, that let's say, for instance, you, you love your snail racing. You've always had a huge passion for snail racing. You still might not get loads of people watching you, and you still might not make it in the YouTube world, because the fact is, it's probably, in fact, there's almost certainly someone out there already who's better than you, more interesting than you, probably younger than you, better looking than you, and more talented than you. And that's just a fact. You know, that's just a fact. We don't, there's no, you know, YouTube isn't obliged to give us a set number of subscribers and a set number of views. And, you know, if I just keep going, in three years time, YouTube has to give me my 100,000 YouTube views and subscribers per week. No, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. So, and I often see, or I did when I was on social media, I often see people posting up, well, how can I get more, how can I get more subs, you know? How can I get more views? What, why is it that I'm doing this every week and no one is watching me? Well, the reason is probably, unfortunately, because they don't want to watch you because either your content's not interesting enough or you're not interesting enough or the subject matter isn't what they want to watch. And that's just a fact. No one holds a gun to someone's head on YouTube and says, you must watch this. You know, that's, it's just the way of the world. People will either watch you or they won't. And everybody will find their level. And so we can't all be Sean Tucker or Thomas Heaton or Nigel Danson. We can't be those people. Those people, right, are you ready for this, Darren? Right, those people are there because they're good at what they do. And they're interesting and they're entertaining and people want to watch them and that's how it is and I'm at my you know 100 times less more than 100 times less base because less people want to watch me less people find me interesting and less people care about what I do or find my content interesting and that's just a fact and you have to accept that before you start and that's where passion is really important because if you're really passionate about what you do then chasing subs and views doesn't doesn't become the number one priority for you being on YouTube the number one priority is the fact that you go out and you you know partake in your passion and you create something to share with other people so you're sharing your passion with them and you know, that's a real cold, hard fact that you have to get your head around. Just because you go on YouTube, you're not entitled. There's no, there's no program of entitlement. And you can, you can throw a lot of money at it. You can push your subs up to an unrealistic level. You know, you can. You can probably, well, in fact, you can, without a doubt. You can push your subs up to as far as you want to go. You can pay loads of money in advertising. You could probably, you know, employ unscrupulous measures you can play the game you can put all the right tags on and you can do all the right seo and you can do everything that, that those people tell you or you know how to gain you know 100,000 subscribers in a month you can do all of that but if you're not interested those 100,000 subscribers won't watch you and that's what really matters it doesn't matter how many like if you look at the numbers i've got nearly 2,100 subscribers and generally generally speaking i never get 2100 views on a vlog ever sometimes so never ever is a bit of a lie sometimes i do but generally i don't and the reason for that is because there's only 100 people uh, uh, you know 1500 to 1000 people who want to watch what i do a lot of people will have subscribed and gone oh no actually i can't be bothered and that's exactly what will happen if you buy those subscribers. Or when I say buy, I'm not talking necessarily 
you actually go out and physically buy subscribers, but you, you pay money for advertising or you put a lot of time in to gain those subscribers initially. Some will stick, of course, so you will be marginally more successful than you would have been. But you won't, they won't all watch and you will find your level. You'll find your level, people who are interested in you will watch you and people who won't, won't. And if you're not very interesting or not very good, then less people are gonna watch you and that's just life. So yeah, that's really mainly what I wanted to talk about today and what I wanted to say. I mean, I will say YouTube is a fantastic place, you know, for your own, if you, if you, if you find something you love, the, 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 the ability to be creative, the ability to, you know, put that passion out in a creative way is fantastic. You know, the self-confidence you gain from it is amazing. But you have to appreciate the fact that you're not going to get overnight success or overnight stardom. And most likely you're never going to get it. You're never going to get that success that you're craving if that's what you do it for. So that's all I wanted to say, really. I um, hope you've enjoyed this week. Um, you know, usual, usual ramble, usual load of rubbish. I'll be back next week trying to find something else to rant about or be passionate about, as I like to say. And uh, until then, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for commenting. And I'll see you next time. And now I'm going home. Oh, because that's three and a half laps already.